Well, hello, good evening, boys and girls, and welcome to the Saturday night edition of the RFES Bedtime Story. It's good old Mr. Holden here, and I've got a great story. I wanted to share another Curious George story, uh, because I know we have some Curious George fans out there on the RFES YouTube channel, but you know what, I was trying to think of the perfect one to share, and then it just jumped out at me. It's this one. It is Halloween, you know, and... I hope you're having a good Halloween. Are you doing some fun things? Did you plan some fun activities with your family? Mr. Holden has to admit that this is the latest I have ever carved my pumpkin. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to have it lit every night this week to, to keep the celebration of Halloween going a little longer. I know somebody named Mrs. Fanshawe that would probably approve of that, don't you think? But I'm very excited. I'm actually going to put some pumpkin seeds in the oven and roast them and eat them as a snack. And then I'm going to start a big fire in my backyard and have a family bonfire. So I hope you did some fun things too. And I've got a great story to help you unwind on this Halloween and get us ready for November. It's called Curious George Goes to a Costume Party. And it's illustrated in the style of H.A. Ray by Martha Weston. And the character was developed by Margaret and H.A. Ray. Here it is. This is George. He was a good little monkey, and he was always very, you guessed it, curious. One day, George and his friend, the man with the yellow hat, were on their way to a party at Mrs. Gray's house. George could not wait. He liked parties, and he was looking forward to seeing Mrs. Gray. But when the door opened, George did not see Mrs. Gray at all. He saw a witch! Don't be afraid, George, said the man with the yellow hat. This witch is our friend. The witch took off her mask. It was Mrs. Gray after all. Oh dear, she said. Did I forget to tell did I forget to tell you that this is a ha costume party? George had never been to an actual costume party before. Inside he saw more people than he knew. They were all wearing costumes, pretending to be somebody else. Hey, there was his friend, Betsy. She was dressed up like an astronaut. Was that Bill? Why, he looked just like a mummy. George wanted to wear a costume, too. Well, I have some dress-up clothes upstairs, said Mrs. Gray. Would you like to use them to make a costume, George? Mrs. Dre Gray took George to a room with a big trunk full of different clothes. Borrow everything, anything that you like, George, she said. I have just the thing for your friend downstairs. George tried on a lot of costumes. This one was too big. This one was too small. This one was too silly. And this one was a little too scary for George's liking. At last, George found a costume that was just right. He was a rodeo cowboy. He wore a vest and pants with a fringe. He even had a lasso and a hat. If only he could see himself in the mirror. George was curious. Could he see himself if he stood on the bed? Nope, he needed to jump higher. George bounced on the bed just a little, but still he couldn't see. He bounced a little more, and a little more, and a little more, and a little more. Soon George was having so much fun he forgot all about looking in the mirror. He bounced as high as he could until... Crash! George bounced off the bed. He smashed into the night table, and he got tangled up in the tablecloth. Suddenly, everything went dark. George heard the people downstairs gasp. What was that? A ghost? A ghost? George did not want to meet up with a ghost alone and by himself. He dashed out of the room and down the hall. He wanted to get back to his friend in a hurry, and he knew the fastest way. He hopped onto the stair rail and sailed, whoosh, right down the stairs. It is a ghost, someone screamed. Everyone turned. They looked scared, and they were looking at George. The ghost must be right behind him. George flew off the rail and landed, plop, in the arms of a farmer. But this wasn't really a farmer. It was his friend, the man with the yellow hat. Soon everyone stopped looking scared and started to laugh. That's not a ghost. That's a cowboy, laughed a policeman. That's not a cowboy. That's a monkey, giggled the princess. That's just not just any monkey, said Betsy. It's Curious George. Everyone clapped and cheered. They liked George's Halloween trick. 
Well, you certainly gave us a big scare, George, said Mrs. Gray, and I'm glad to see you found some interesting costumes. Now, why don't I take your ghost outfit so you can join the party? After the guests bobbed for apples, it was jack-o'-lanterns. They lit them up, and they played some party games. They got prizes for the best costumes, and those were handed out, too. There was one prize for Betsy, and one for Bill, and two for Curious George. That's because you were the best ghost and the best cowboy, George, said Mrs. Gray. Everyone had a good time at the party indeed, especially George, and too soon it was time to say goodbye. Good night, George, she said. Happy Halloween! And that's the story, Curious George Goes to a Costume Party. It's a part of a larger book I have called A Treasury of Curious George. It has a lot of Curious George books all in one place. Well, I certainly hope whatever you did that you were able to have a really, really good Halloween Saturday. If you had a costume, I hope you had fun putting it on. I know I enjoyed seeing all the costumes on the Friday Google Meets for Rogers Forge. And I look forward to seeing you Monday back for another week of remote learning. But first, don't forget, we have our very first RFES bedtime story for the month of November. Most importantly, I hope you have a really good night's sleep tonight. And don't forget to turn your clocks back one hour because... The clock's changed tonight. Have a really good night's sleep. I'll see you back tomorrow night on the RFES YouTube channel.